Welcome at KV2 Audio and SLA, Super Live Audio Technology. My name is Stefano Trevisan, and with me is George Crampera, co founder and head of RD at KV2 Audio. Our next video covers the topic of uh, electronics design at KV2 Audio. George, what can you say about the key points in electronics design at KV2? Oh, at a uh, light level, we have, generally speaking, all the amplifiers are designed to support the acoustic part. No? I mean, we have a different uh, topology on the high frequency, different on mid frequencies, and different on the subwoofers. So no, you're saying no. we, have, we have different amplifiers yes. in, uh, for and each section? For here, each for example, we have a amplifier which runs 421. It delivers <coughs> 6 kilowatts into 2 ohm, the peak. It's up to 14 kilowatts. Lots of people will say how you can get 14 kilowatts peak when you have only three kilowatts from the from the line. I must say no. the 421 is our uh, four times 21 inch subwoofer um, from KV2 that features this amplifier. Yeah. And uh, that means we have a three kilowatt continuously and the power supply actually continues the charging this a huge bank of capacitors where we store the energy. No? And then when we need it, no, we can actually get uh, that energy, add to the energy from the line, no, and to all together we get actually for a relatively long time six kilowatt RMS output, which represents in this case, no, actually. Normally, we can recalculate to 12 kilowatts, but because the voltage before it drops, it actually provides 14 kilowatts peak. No? And uh, this is only way how we actually can use it. No? And real, like a 6 kilowatt amplifier running from 3 kilowatt wall. We have to store in time when the requirement for the power is very low. And what happens actually, when you have the uh, <coughs> amplifier clipping, no, you actually find out you measure not three kilowatts, you measure consumption around one and a half kilowatt. The difference in the, in, the, in the power, we actually store it in those capacitors here. No? And then when we need the power, we actually release it, we use the power from the capacitors and from the line. No? And that runs the amplifier, which is here, the amplifier it has about 90% efficiency now, and it delivers 100, 100 amps on the output. We need 100 that amperes. Yeah. And we need that uh, current to control the mass of the large 21-inch woofers, which was specifically designed for that application from BNC. So the higher the current, the better the control? Better control of the of speaker the yes. it's a, itself. No. But in the same time, what guarantee the control? It's that bank of capacitors. No? Because that represents the impedance, which actually control the mass of the speaker. Can we say that this kind of amplifier design, and this kind of energy management, is spe especially good for music and for subwoofers? Especially because when I clip standard music, I'm going to clip it. No? But my consumption will be one to 1.5 kilowatts, no, and uh, at the clipping point, no, and uh, that means. So you're saying we're drawing 14 kilowatts, but as everything is stored, we are not pulling more from the. Let's say average will be 1.5 kilowatts. Average no? is 1.5. Yeah, that means we have lots of power to charge the capacitors, and when we when we need a peak, all that energy is already ready here. I mean, then we take the energy from the yes. capacitor. Add it to the uh, power which we're getting from the wall now, and all together the amplifier really for a relatively long time can provide six kilowatt RMS output now, and the amplifier running into two ohms. Yes. No. The voltage on the amplifier now it's plus minus 150 volts. That's the voltage playing uh, between the playing rings. on uh, yeah on the output. Okay, what can you say in general about damping factor and the damping factor in how it is used in the industry? You know, damping factor, usually they say, they talk about damping factor at one kilohertz. 
No, and it's a huge number, which is not true, really. The damping factor, we have a transistor, we have a speaker, or the switch, it doesn't matter. We have a speaker, and we have a capacitor. No? And damping factor at low frequency, no? This, we can say it's a switch. I mean, we can, we can say it's closed switch. No? And now, our damping factor is represented by that capacitor here. No? And, uh, which is Xc. No? And the reactance of the capacitor represent the damping factor for the amplifier. If you calculate the capacitors which is used in lots of amplifiers, they think damping factor is 400, you'll end up with 2.6, 2.5, they are lucky if that number is there. No? So it's a misuse fa um, parameter in the yeah, end. Yeah, exactly. Can you, can you say how they measure it? Because they have obviously wrong numbers. Oh, they measure very simple way. They, it's a, the damping factor, it's a output impedance of the amplifier and compared to loading impedance. Compared no, to the loading the, impedance. Yeah. That's and, uh, but uh, they measure at the low power. But you, under real situation, you know, in the live music, those peaks are always up to clipping. No, and therefore, to control the amplifier at this point, no, you need large capacitance here, which in our case is no problem. It's more than we ever need. Yeah. Okay. How do cable rounds, long cables, affect? Uh, it's a limited. You need larger uh, cables because uh, <coughs> uh, because the losses, the amplifier running into two ohms, and that's why the amplifier is actually built in in the subwoofer. No, and the second trump some of it's connected through it with the short with the short cable. Short cable. What else can we say about the other amplifiers we have and um, uh, power supply design that we feature at KV2? We know we, we still have the uh, ring uh, transformer. Yeah, we have a uh, toroid transformers for one simple reason. There is no more reliable. Uh, component than toroidal transformer. That's the main reason why we're using toroidal transformers. No. And, uh, and then uh, after toroidal transformer, we have a switching no, power supply just to control the uh, power factor. No. And, uh, but uh, most of the time, it's not important. No. But the uh, new amplifier which we have, they actually run, they have a special system on the primary of the transformer, no, which actually can adjust. I mean, the amplifier delivers same power, like in this case, this amplifier delivers same power from 160 volts up to 270 volts. It delivers same power. No. And the uh, same thing in, uh, on the VHD5, the amplifiers, they run from 190 up to 270 volts, same power, same power on the output. What classes of amplifiers are we using for different bands, in frequency bands? It's a, this is like a switching a rail now. Therefore, the efficiency in this case is about 90%. And for the mid frequencies, we're using like a class, somebody called class H amplifier, now, which is our efficiency around 80%. For high frequency, we are using the AB class amplifiers with output transformer. Now, advantage of that amplifier has a extremely good intermodulation product under the clipping condition. That's the main reason for it. Okay. Hey, thank you, George. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you for watching and see you soon.